Hello everyone. Now today we are going to see the dynamometer. So this dynamometer it is a device which is basically used to measure the brake power of engine. So this dynamometer they are basically classified into two categories. One is absorption type of dynamometer and another one is transmission type of dynamometer. So in absorption type of dynamometer whatever the brake power we are measuring from the engine that power has been now dissipated in the form of heat means that power it has been absorbed so and that power we are not yeah, getting to utilize to any other activity so this type of dynamometer is called as absorption dynamometer and in transmission type of dynamometer the power which has been lost while measuring the brake power of engine that power has been utilized for other purpose so that type of dynamometer is called as transmission type of dynamometer so in absorption type of dynamometer there are two types of absorption type of dynamometer such as prony brake type of dynamometer and rope belt type of dynamometer while in transmission type there are three types of dynamometer one is belt transmission dynamometer second one is davis gibson type of torsion type of dynamometer and last is epicyclic dynamometer. So we will see each individually. So this is the absorption type of dynamometer and its name is Prony brake dynamometer. This dynamometer was developed by the scientist Prony. So it is named as Prony brake dynamometer. Here if you see this is the flywheel or this is the wheel which is coming from the output shaft of engine. So this is nothing but a disc which is attached to the engine output shaft of the engine. Then this disc is been surrounded by the two run blocks. These are the two run blocks, which has now been in contact with this disc with the help of this nut bolt system and spring is applied so as to apply uniform pressure. So this is the lever, through this lever, we are applying the load and this is the counterbalance load so that this lever will be horizontal when we are not applying any load. So in order to measure the brake power, here we have to just calculate the work done or whatever the output we are getting, we have to just measure in terms of product of weight into this length from the center of the load, means where the load is been acting to the center of the disc. So here whatever the torque which is acting on the system is measured in terms of product of load into the distance from the center of the load where the load is acting to the center point of the disc. So in this way, for this chronic brake dynamometer, you are getting the output or you are measuring the brake power of the engine. So here, if you see, this wooden block is in contact with the periphery surface of this disc. So there will be maximum friction. And if there is maximum friction, then there will be maximum heat generation. So there will be maximum power loss and this power loss we are not able to utilize for other purpose. So this type of dynamometer is called as absorption type of dynamometer. Next is rope brake type of dynamometer. So in this case, this is the disc which is particularly attached to the output shaft of engine. And this disc is been surrounded by the rope which is having wooden blocks attached at intermediate point. And in order to avoid the maximum heat generation, here you have provided some cooling water jacket. So one end of rope is attached to the load and another one is attached to the spring balance. So here, whatever the brake power we are measuring. So here the brake power will be measuring this from that is product with difference of the load into linear velocity divided by 60 in terms of bat. So here, there will be provision of wooden blocks either case or there will be no need of providing the wooden blocks. It depends on the application and cooling water is used to just dissipate the heat to the atmosphere so as to avoid the maximum heat generation. So this type of dynamometer is called as a rope brake type of dynamometer and brake power is measured by given formula as W minus S that is weight dead weight minus spring balance weight into linear circular velocity pi dn transition velocity divided by 60 that will be in terms of divide. So these are the two types of absorption type of dynamometer. So that is chronic brake and rope brake type of dynamometer. 
Now next is transmission type of diameter. So in this transmission type of diameter, first type is belt transmission, or it is also called as prod, or it is also called as thorny crop diameter. As this diameter was developed by the scientist, so the name are given on that scientist name. So here there will be two idler pulleys. One will be driving pulley, another will be the driven pulley. So this driving pulley is attached to the engine output shaft, whose brake power we are going to measure. And this is nothing but the belt. It is this is the continuous belt, which is being supplied on these two idler pulleys as well as this driven pulley. From where we are getting the output, and here we are getting the input. This output of the engine, which is given to the driving pulley. So with with the difference in the tension on on the particular belt system, belt drive system. We will be getting the brake power system for this type of diameter. So here, the difference in tension of the belt belt system will give you directly the brake power of the engine. And here, the power is being not lost. Here, the power it is being utilized for transferring the another system as per the requirement through the driven pulley. So this type of diameter is called as transmission type of diameter. Now, next type of transmission type of dynamometer is Davis Gibson flashlight torsion dynamometer. So, as this type of dynamometer was developed by the scientist Davis and Gibson, so this dynamometer is called as Davis Gibson flashlight torsion dynamometer. So, here if you see, there are two discs. This is disc A and this is disc B. Now, this is the shaft. Okay. So on this shaft, engine output is I means engine output shaft is attached to the system. So here in this part on the A side, this is the light is light lamp supply is given, and another piece eyepiece is given. So when there is no any torque transmission, the output shaft will be having no any torque acting on the surface. So there will be no any twisting action. So whatever the light rays they are coming from this source, they will be directly impacted on this eyepiece. And when there is particular torque transmission taking place, means when torque is taking place, there will be twisting action on that output shaft. And due to the twisting action, there will be some lagging in the position of the eyepiece. So in the last slide, if you see here, you have changed the position of the eyepiece. So in this way, by knowing the angle of lag, here we are just going to measure the change in angle of the light which is coming from the source through the eyepiece. So that will be the the uh, output brake power is that uh, angle of that lap is converted into brake power system. So in this way, for the torsion type of dynamometer, we are measuring the brake power for the any engine. Now, last is the epicyclic train dynamometer. So it basically consists of simple epicyclic train. Here, the engine shaft is connected to the spur gear system shown here. And this spur gear is attached to the annular gear system. Your annular gear is nothing but the internal gear system, which is being run through this pinna. This pinna is the intermediate gear, which basically meshes with both internal gear as well as the spur gear. And here, to this lever, weight is attached so that uh, particularly you can apply the torque on the system. And the difference of the or the product of the load into the distance where the load is been acting from the center point is being measured so that the brake power for the system can be calculated. And here some counterbalance weight is attached so as to keep this arm in equilibrium position when load is not acting on the system. So for the epicyclic gear train here you can utilize this power which is coming which has been lost to the pinion to the annular gear system. So, in this way, we are calculating the brake power for the epicyclic gear type of diameter. Thank you.